grants that a lot of people, not just travellers, a lot of people in the area that I know depended on them, and now they're all gone and has to go to money lenders now to get the few pounds, to get the children organised, because when you have family, you know the struggle you go through. They want, they want, they want, they never give, only what you have to give them. So there is a struggle out there. I've experienced myself as much as I have to tell them, but look, at it certainly didn't do us any favours, and it doesn't show the real-life story of not being able to get a hotel, not being able to get a function room. There's lots of other things out there, and she just wouldn't take them. If you look at shit, that's not what we want. And as I said, one of the ministers did come out and say a couple of years ago, Lav I think the word he used was lavish uh, lifestyle communions, and the grants were just stopped. So it didn't send out a very good message. I don't approve of them. That's my own personal view. They didn't do us any favours as mothers either. Certainly no. Yeah. I suppose just to, to, in terms of the resources, um, the, uh, we welcome the uh, additional resources this year, but when you actually break it down into uh, concrete terms, um, what you have is 30 units, and that's based on the chartered uh, surveyor's estimate. You'd have 30 units for the f uh, five and a half million. So Ronnie made a reference in her paper to a need for 5,500 units. So it would take about 170 years to catch up at the present rate. Um, in relation to the five-year plans, what kind of my experience of working with the local authorities on the five-year plans has been that what you are dealing with in the first do, do is uh, the one from 2000 to 2004 and 2005 to 2008. You are dealing with legacy issues that were highlighted in the task reform, uh, report in 1995. So by 2008, you had it to some extent caught up on some of the legacy issues, but it wasn't taken account of what was happening, the natural growth that was happening. Um, and just in relation to the, you know, the, what the experience of travellers were after the Carrick Mines, and I suppose Carrick Mines, you know, the people lose their identity when we call it Carrick Mines. We're talking about the Connors, the Lynches and the Gilbert families and the, the grieving that they're going through at the moment. But what, what I think is not helpful is to put it in the context of a generalised statements. What we would have experienced at that, and I would have, um, I would work in Wicklow, so I'd know the situation. Um, what we would have experienced in that is a mixture, and it's a mixture. It's like kind of right across the country. You'd have a mixture with local authorities. Some local authorities returned the, the funding, others don't. Others use the full funding either. Others would try and get additional funding. So, and it would be the same with the, the uh, Connors, um, Lynch and Gilbert families. The mixture and the outpouring of grief on one hand would have been fantastic from some people and would have received a lot of support but in others you know some of the hotels closed and we can't kind of close our eyes to that either just before you conclude deputy canny uh, had had a yeah. comment so and, I... and sorry i'd step out there but basically the first thing i want to say to you is i want to compliment you on your forthright um a presentations here and it's it's enlightening and just one one small question to ask you i know myself from from in where i am in gall east in tume mathanry and banislow there's a, a number a good number of of tram, uh, travelers and what i wanted to know is we have a place in tume called brew bridge and it's it, it works fairly well i think but have you examples or models of things that work well within for you that we could, I don't need to know them now, but so that we could maybe, something we could model the good things on going forward and try and replicate that right across communities. And I was particularly taken with um, 
Missy Collins and her presentation. I want to compliment you on it. Thank you very much. Thank you, Deputy. Sorry for that interruption. But... So, um, just a, a few is, is closing comments at, at this stage. Um, just, um, Deputy Breen, you're right, like, not all travellers want to live in group housing schemes are um, on halting sites. And the issue that you raise is choice, and that people need to have a choice that's a real choice. And one of the problems is people haven't had that choice, which is why you've seen the growth from 2% to 27 percent in private rented over the between 2002 and, and 2013 and now you're seeing uh, a, a, an exit is out because of the costs the racism the mental health the issues are in terms of the children you know that it's just not a choice no more than it is for the general community it's it's really so we would encu encourage the government to have you know a public social housing program and build them we would also encourage the government as part of that to have a clause in terms of community gain so if traveler accommodation has been built given the high rates of unemployment couldn't a percentage of travelers be included as labourers or whatever, you know, landscapers. So I think we need to look at those kind of things that are relevant and are possible and, you know, it would give added value. In terms of Carrick Mines um, and, and uh, you know, the I, I was on the record of saying, you know, what we went from was bouquets to boulders within a week. Don't forget that. Mm -hmm. So there was a huge load of solidarity and it was really important because it actually showed travellers that people do care. But within a week there was a small, and it's always only a minority, you know, objecting to the development of an emergency facility for them there. So, you know, you, you know, goodwill doesn't last very long and what we want is institutional mechanisms that will guarantee travellers their human rights and protect them from discrimination and racism and hostility. Um, in terms of the programme for government, we are, you're, you're dead right, rightly disappointed in terms of the lack of visibility of travellers in Roma and I don't think it's unrelated to the fact that travellers in Roma are not visible in most political parties, you know, and that there's no public representative, you know, from, from those backgrounds at, at a national level. We had some um, in tune, for example, at the local urban district council level, but people don't get elected. You know, it, it's very, very difficult um, when you think the population and how dispersed they are. It's not going to happen unless we have affirmative action. And one of the things we would like to see is quotas. Like, it's, it's ironic that in the likes of Romania, they actually have reserved seats in the parliament for Roma. There's Roma representation is guaranteed. You know, so I think those things could all be addressed. Um, just um, in terms of good examples, like the civil service internship scheme was, was wonderful, but the problem was it was only like six months and when it ended, it ended. Mm. That could be mainstreamed. There, there is lots of stuff there. And as I say, it doesn't need rocket science. A lot of this is already documented, but what it has to happen is be put into practice. Um, I just wanted to, to highlight um, in terms of your own question, one of the recommendations we make in, in the full... Um, recommendations that I've given is that we've proposed maybe that the housing agency should undertake a specific study on the current traveller accommodation crisis to be published by August 2017 and to carry out an independent national assessment of the state of traveller specific accommodation. That hopefully would get over we said, you said, the local authorities hiding, hiding figures. So that was something that we, there's a whole load of other recommendations. I only highlighted some that we would hope um, might address it. And I suppose our big concern is that what we see is travellers increasingly becoming more segregated and increasing ghettoisation of travellers. So I remember when I first started to work with travellers in, in 1980. Four. Um, in a villa park, there was a football pitch, a playground. Mm. Um, there's, there's nothing but houses there, mm. you know, and the proposal is on every spare bit. And then that can lead to all sorts of conflict, internal, interfamily conflict as well, because incompatible families are often forced together, you know. So it's, it's really hostage to fortune. And I suppose, just in, in, in finally, I would say, if you look at the waste of resources in terms of the evictions, for example, in Dundalk, if that could be put into positive developments, you know, that's all we're saying is let's 
get over this. It's not insurmountable. Traveller organisations at national and local level are ready, willing and able to work with the state. We need to be given the opportunity. The, one of the things that is in the programme for government is the development of the National Traveller Roma Inclusion Strategy, which is part of a European framework. And we're hopeful that some stuff will come out of that. But that cannot be seen letting everybody else off the hook. The Department of Health has to produce a new National Traveller Health um, strategy. They haven't allowed the Traveller Health Advisory Committee meet since October 2012. It's disgraceful. So in terms of accommodation, we need the agency. We hope you will recommend that. Um, and it's not an accommodation agency. It's an agency within its brief. And it could maybe focus on accommodation in, in its first year of, of being or something. But it needs, we need stuff in health, in education, in, across the board. So I just want to thank you again for giving us the opportunity this morning to encourage you to uh, look at the Roma issue in your deliberations and to remind people that at the end of the day, we are talking about travellers as human beings mm -hmm. who have a right to human rights. And that's all we're asking for, basic human rights. Th thank you very much. That concludes this section, and I'd like to thank the members of Pave Point for uh, their attendance here today, their presentations, um, including the submission to the committee. I suppose I would like to reiterate that this is a very short-lived committee, a couple of months, due to report in the middle of June, whose primary focus is housing and homelessness, but very conscious from the contributions that you've made, <coughs> that you've made today that the housing and homelessness issue facing travellers has consequential effects in terms of health, mental health, suicide and so forth. And you made those points uh, very, very vividly to the committee here today. So thank you for your presentations. Um, colleagues, we'll suspend till 2 o'clock this afternoon. Thank you. <laughs>